So, hi. Uh, I'm Gareth Redden King. Uh, I live in South East London. I work on um, climate change analysis and communications for a non-profit. Yes, and this is this is this is my house in South East London. So these, these houses were only built 10 years ago. We moved in in 2013, and uh, nobody had lived in the house before. Um, but despite being brand new then, and despite the fact that they've, they've been built to a fairly high spec for energy efficiency, they've got good insulation, they've got good double glazing, they've got solar panels on the roof, but they were built with, um, with gas central heating uh, and gas hobs. Um, and uh, as we later discovered, you know, even the piping was not actually fit for, uh, ready for installing a heat pump. So um, they seemed very good um, in, in most senses in terms of their energy efficiency and just being sort of good at reducing emissions, but gas central heating uh, and gas hobs. So the, our motivation for installing the heat pump was, you know, despite the house being built to pretty high spec for energy efficiency, we still had, uh, we, you know, we were still causing emissions. Um, we wanted to, to get to the point where we weren't reliant on fossil fuels. That was the only thing left that we needed to change. So we installed uh, an induction hob in the kitchen uh, to get rid of the, the gas hob, but actually that's you know, cooking is actually a small part of gas use. The biggest part is the, the heating. So, so then we wanted to get a heat pump uh, and get off gas uh, completely. So it wasn't it wasn't particularly easy to to actually go through the process and actually find uh, somebody who could install a heat pump. I uh, emailed and, and and you know filled in forms online with a lot of different companies to to ask about this. And I, I think that you know the, the problem was that I wasn't the only person. Fortunately, I wasn't the only person in the country who had decided to start thinking about switching away from from gas to heat pumps. Um, and so actually, you know. The, the demand is not being met by the supply um, at the moment, uh, or hasn't been recently. So, so emailed a lot of people, filled in a lot of forms, wasn't finding anybody who could who actually had capacity to do it. Um, then I discovered uh, an organisation I think are called the Heating Hub that do assessments of your, your home for you to kind of try and judge whether the home is ready for a heat pump. Because obviously you need to know that you're not going to be, you know, it's fine to, to generate lots of clean heat, but if it's all being used to heat the streets because your house is badly insulated, then, you know, you're wasting money, you're wasting energy. Um, so they did that assessment and the benefit of, you know, paying them to do that, which is only about 100 quid, um, is that they could then connect you to um, installers that they knew. So they connected us to Danu and to Miron Energy, um, who then came and had a look and uh, you know worked out what was possible, what wasn't, um, made suggestions as to what sort of system to use, and discovered the problems um, that you know that the pipe was too small, that the piping was too small with the heating that was installed. That we would need to do something different. We couldn't literally take one thing off and, and put the other thing on. Um, so my name is Dan Miron and I became an entrepreneur from an early stage, um, early chat 23. So um, the system behind me is looking pretty much conventional as a normal one, but um, in um, in the low temperature designs we are trying to keep as um, um, less controls possible and choose the right controls as well as weather compensation um, with quite quite minimal um, uh, weather compensation controls at the moment. But luckily um, the product we put in place we had weather compensation um, thermostats which we introduced and just having that um, solution for every single job makes it really easy to um, accommodate to um, a specific uh, house and a client. Um, on this specific um, project we have used an um, Ecodan um, heat pump just because we assessed the, the noise of the um, heat pump just because the customer wanted to have it installed by the, uh, by, I mean, mounted up on a wall, really close to a window. So it was a really um, a gain to make sure that we put the the, the great heat pump, which is um, the 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 noise is quite quite low on it. Also, we have put um, a mixer G cylinder in just because it's making it so easy to see the the, the volume of hot water used um, and is giving that um, reliability of um, how um, smart things can be integrated into simply an old um, system. Um, and it's quite great to have it uh, here with us. 
We also have the Ecodan, as mentioned, just because it was a great pump. Any products we put forward, we are trained, we are uh, accredited by them. So we can give that uh, maximum uh, warranty possible as an approved installer with, um, with our um, manufacturers. So we discovered that um, the, the piping was not ideal for getting the, the hot water to the, the radiator system that we had from the heat pump. Um, so we would need some sort of alternative. So, you know, suddenly the prospects of kind of digging up floors and, and installing things that we don't understand, you know, and, and, or, or it just simply not being possible, it being too expensive. So um, Danu told us about thermoskirt centres, uh, a YouTube video showing how it worked, how it was installed. Um, then I think sent us a, a podcast where you know some consumer journalist was discussing it and had recently discovered it and was very excited about it. More on floor heating. It's a multifunctional skirting board. Yeah, love that. Um, and you know it looked a, it certainly looked a, a much more appealing prospect than than kind of you know taking up floors and putting underfloor heating in necessarily. Um, and it you know it looks it looks very neat. Certainly, you know the way it's all neatly installed in the videos. It all looks very neat. It gets gets rid of you know gets rid of radiators off the wall. So uh, and you know it fitted within. Fortunately, it fitted it within what we could uh, afford to spend. Um, and so we went ahead with it. Our um, journey started by um, trying to help reduce the um, or tr to do the transition uh, net zero carbon emissions and um, install um, renewable systems by doing so. Um, so when, um, when I've done the assessment and also when I've got the uh, results from the initial consultations with um, 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 hub heating, we have uh, discovered that there is micro uh, uh, pipe within the flooring and it, at some point it might still work but we decided just to reduce that risk and we put forward solutions like changing some of the pipe work or doing so we're trying to accommodate the budget with the with the solutions so um, we also put a reference forward to our um, customers and Thermoscot was a really good reference because you could see the product you can you can get them um, um, a sample as well to actually feel the product before you decide to go for it so Thermoscot was a great solution for this project because we didn't want to disturb um, the, the house um, that much. With Thermoscot we introduced a lo um, manifold which is used for underfloor heating and from there through the hallway we've run a pipe to the nearest door from where the Thermoscot starts and this was a really great um, idea because you don't lift up the floors in the bedrooms and it's making it so easy to install without, I mean, simply feeling still comfortable having builders in the house and just because use a thermoskirt, the plumbers can install it as well. You're reducing trades as well, so no carpenters are needed just to cut, trim, and so it was really easy to have less many, less people on site, and also easy to install, so it was great experience and great product. It was once the thermoskirt was installed and the heat pump was up and running, um, it was all set up as one zone for the house because that's, you know, that's the most efficient way to, to run a heat pump. However, um, the heat rises in this house downstairs here in the, the kitchen and the hallway. It's quite a big space to heat. Um, it's a concrete floor. So actually, downstairs was staying too cold and upstairs was getting too hot. Yeah. So um, Danu came back and, and put in a separate zone so that actually the heating doesn't come on all that much upstairs and it comes on enough down here to heat up. And with the thermoskirt around the side, it's now as good as, if not better, than, than it was before in terms of heating this space down here. The, the system has been great over winter in terms of you know, heating the house enough. Well, obviously we had some, I mean, it was a fairly mild winter, but we had some very, very cold periods. Um, and the thermoskirt and the heat pump absolutely did the job, kept the house warm. Um, it's it's not completely easy to, to judge the, the cost impact because obviously we're in a period when gas prices globally are very high, that's pushed up electricity prices. This is not a sort of normal period to judge by. So, you know, watch this space and ask us in a little while. But, you know, checking the energy use, um, we are getting, you know, the heat that we need to heat this house for much less energy than we used to use because a heat pump is much more efficient than burning gas. So the process with Thermoscript was pretty much straightforward. After we knew the, the design, we simply placed the border. Uh, we got the, the um, Thermoscript inside um, and it was like 
the rooms already prepared we had it installed really quick so as we are accredited now with Thermoskirt after our experience with it uh, we really want to put forward this product for the right properties we go in with these small solutions for radiators where we underfloor heating uh, fails and it is it's pretty much straightforward um, for us to see where the actual product works and is like number one where we can just put it forward uh, when I need it. Then there was this glorious moment when we just no longer needed gas to come into the house. And so, you know, I was working at home, Dan who called me downstairs said I'm going to cut off the gas. So I got my phone ready, filmed him, literally cutting the pipe, turning the gas off. I thought he should have done it the other way around, turned the gas off and then cut the pipe, but fine. He knows what he's doing. And it means that, you know, we are no longer connected. We no longer have gas coming into the house. We no longer need to burn a fossil fuel to, to heat the house. So that's great. And they've even come away and taken the uh, taken the, the, the meter away now. So. You hate it, <laughs> <laughs> No, I would definitely recommend Thermoskirt to, to other people on the basis of our experience of it. It's incredibly neat, um, you know, it's doing the job that big old radiators stuck on the wall were doing before. Um, we have a cat, he seems to like curling up against it when it's nice and warm. Um, it, it's, it's, yeah, it's great. It's really neat and tidy and it's, it's heating the house, which is what we need it to do. So um, um, I would uh, recommend Thermoskirt because it's such a nice and robust material. Uh, it's made of aluminium with a really nice painting coat and you can just uh, punch it, uh, try to scratch it so it's really easy to clean, really easy to um, see it and it's pleasant as an experience as a customer to show off kind of to other people how nice and shiny the product is. So yeah. If you want to learn more information about Gareth's move away from gas, including a full list of the products used, thermal performance data, and of course the overall costs, there's a link to a full write-up in the description below. And of course, like and subscribe for more videos like this.